An absolutely intriguing new study reveals that the laws of physics can in fact be broken. For 150 years, we thought this law of physics could not be changed. And yet, well, a recent study in American University shows that actually solar panels could in fact be changed to be completely different and possibly three, five, ten times better than what they are today. And we're a long way off this actually happening, but it is in fact theoretically possible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I've got to say, I have not been more excited at a recent development for a long time. I mean, when you hear about the laws of physics being broken, and when this is legitimate, not coming from some random laboratory trying to get funding or billions of dollars from someone here doing a SPAC merger or some nonsense like that, Nicola, you know what I'm talking about. When you see this coming from a laboratory at an American university, an esteemed one, you know that this is actually legitimate. Now, what am I talking about? Well, here's the thing. It's difficult to explain. If you take an object and you set it out in the sun, like a solar panel, it will begin to warm up. This is because it is absorbing energy from the sun's rays and converting that energy to heat. If you leave that object outside, it will continue getting warmer, but only to a point. A sunbather lying on a beach won't catch fire after all. Now, fizz.org says that as objects or people absorb energy, light from the sun, they also emit energy infrared radiation or heat. This is something you might have experienced while walking past a concrete wall on a summer afternoon and feeling heat coming from the wall. The connection between an object's ability to absorb and emit energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, its absorptive and emissive efficiencies has long been explained by something known as Kirchhoff's law of thermal radiation. The law, a concept devised by Gustav Kirchhoff in 1850, states that absorptive and emissive efficiencies are equal at each wavelength and angle of incidence. But that appears to have just been broken which is quite a shock, I think, to everyone. A new device, which we don't even know exactly what it is, but a new device developed in the lab of Harry Atwater, the Howard Hughes Professor of Applied Physics and Material Science, breaks that normally tight relationship between the absorbed and emitted efficiencies of an object. This invention may also have important implications for sustainable energy, such as solar power, harvesting systems, and the development of certain types of camouflage. Now, the reason this device is so intriguing is because solar panels, when heated to a certain point, no longer work efficiently. When the sun is too hot, it actually ruins the efficiency of the panels, and heat is wasted through basically radiation. The heat essentially is no longer absorbed efficiently by the panels, but this would change that. This would mean that it wouldn't matter really what temperature the solar panels were heated to, they would still work efficiently. And this is one of the key reasons that this university has been working on this new technology. The paper describing the work, Direct Observation of Kirchhoff Thermal Radiation Law Violation, appears in the July 24 issue of the journal Nature Photonics. Kirchhoff's law has been upheld for more than 150 years, and while theoretical proposals for its violation have been advanced before, this is the first experimental proof that this law can in fact be broken, said Altwater. Electrical engineering graduate student Comron Shagan, lead author of the new research, said this, The equality dictated by Kirchhoff's law has been a guiding principle in the design of devices that absorb and emit energy in the form of radiation. Because if by designing around and measuring the absorptive properties of a material, we get the emissive properties for free. However, there has been a recent shift when designing emitters or absorbers, namely that we are trying to move beyond having a simple one-to-one -one equality between the emissivity and absorbivity 
of a body. One motivation behind decoupling the two is in energy halving systems such as solar panels. For example, if an energy harvesting object like a photovoltaic solar panel is re-emitting some of its absorbed energy back toward the energy source, the sun, which happens every day, solar panels all around the world don't really work optimally for this reason, this is a regular occurrence, then that energy is lost for human purposes. In theory, if the photovoltaic or other energy harvesting object were to re-emit absorbed radiation away from the source and toward yet another energy harvesting object, one could reach much higher energy conversion efficiencies. Our study shows that it is possible to break the equality of Kirchhoff's law of thermal radiation with a device placed in a moderate magnetic field. The device itself combines a material that has a strong magnetic field response with a patterned structure that enhances absorption and emission in infrared wavelengths. What is particularly exciting is that we can observe the effect by simply heating the device above room temperature and directly comparing the emissive efficiency to the absorptive efficiency. Now, clearly the university doesn't want to t disclose exactly what materials they're using to make this work, to break the laws of physics, because they want to paint it and possibly sell it to um, one of the world's biggest solar companies or whoever. Essentially, they have the secret and don't want to disclose exactly what this is. Co-authors of the study include some very esteemed minds. Those include Suvik Biswas, formerly of Caltech and now at Stanford University, Bozal of the University of Houston, Shanthu Fan of Stanford University, and Harry L. Atwater, who is also the Otis Booth Leadership Chair of the Division of Engineering and Applied Science and the Director of the Liquid Sunlight Alliance. Clearly, if you are the director of the Liquid Sunlight Alliance, you have a bit of a vested interest in holding this technology for yourself. So what exactly is the Liquid Sunlight Alliance? Well, the Liquid Sunlight Alliance was founded in 2020 and is directed by Harry Atwater himself. It's one of two projects in the Fuels from Sunlight Energy Innovation Hub funded by the US Department of Energy. Office of Science, Basic Energy Sciences. The vision is to establish the science principles by which coupled microenvironments directly generate liquid fuels from sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So to me, it sounds as though this project is essentially owned by the United States government, who probably would prefer to keep this technology from falling into Chinese hands. That's the reason we don't know exactly what these materials are. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.